In today's video, we are going through exercise 2.8 from the Art of Electronics. And in this exercise, we are designing an emitter follower. This video is a retake because previously I designed the circuit with a 0 to 15 watt power supply. However, what we need to do is design this circuit with a plus or minus 15 watt power supply. So that's what I will be doing for this video. I have changed my audio settings a little bit. So see what you think and let me know if it sounds better than my previous videos. This is one of the hardest things with making videos is basically fine tuning the audio for me at the moment for the type of videos that I make. So let me know what you think. So for exercise 2.8, we need to design an emitter follower with plus or minus 15 volt power supply. And the emitter follower needs to operate from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And we need to set a 5 milliamp quiescent current. And the input needs to be capacitively coupled. The question doesn't mention anything about the output, but we can capacitively couple that as well if you want to. So that's the question. Let's go on to the solution now. So the emitter follower circuit basically is going to look like this. So we have a 30 watt power supply over here and we have referenced the ground in the middle of this. So we have a plus 15 and a minus 15 watt power supply. We have our input supply coming from here, which then goes into a capacitor C1, a potential divider R1 and R2. We have an emitter resistor over here with an NPN transistor on top. The potential divider obviously is connected to the base of the NPN transistor. So you can see the circuit looks very similar to the to the circuit that we looked at in exercise 2.8 previously however we just have this extra power supply over here to create plus and minus 15 volts rather than just 15 volts which is what we had previously for step one we need to basically choose the ve voltage when our input is basically grounded so we have no input coming in or zero volts coming in from the input and we need to set the output voltage here obviously it is dc so basically the voltage will be set by r1 and r2 to set the best value for VE, basically we want to try and get as much a swing as possible from our output. So that means that we want our VE to go all the way down to minus 15 volts, all the way up to plus 15 volts. So to get the maximum range from our output over here, we need to set VE to zero volts. So that will give us our maximum range for the output. So for the largest possible output swing, we need to set V out or VE to zero volts. So if V out is zero volts, then that means our VB needs to be VE plus the VBE voltage that we see here, which is typically 0.6 volt. So then we can say our base voltage needs to be equal to 0.6 volt. So what we've done so far is set this voltage to zero volts and set this voltage to 0.6 volt. Next, we can choose RE, which is basically this resistor over here. Now the question tells us that we need to have a quiescent current of 5 milliamp. We obviously know the voltage that we've set on this point over here is 0 volt and we have negative 15 volts over here. So that means that the voltage on the resistor RE is 15 volts. Therefore, if we were to set a 5 milliamp current going through RE with 15 volt, then we would need a resistor which is basically 3000 ohms. So what we're doing is ohms law there, so V equals IR. So we divide by I, so 15 volts divided by 5 milliamps gives us 3000 ohms. Next, we can choose our R1 and R2. We know that we need 0.6 volts over here and we have this input grounded, so connected to zero volt. We can also connect this to uh, minus 15 volts if we want to. We'll just get slightly different resistor values. And it may be better in some cases if you are not trying to load your input voltage too much because you will get larger resistors over here. Larger resistors over here means that there's less load or less current being consumed from our input. So there are some advantages to connecting this node over here to basically minus 15 volt. But in this case, I've connected to ground. So VB, we need to set to 0 0.6 volts. We're going to assume the transistor beta is 50. So basically the current going into here is multiplied by 50, which is going to be the current down IC. So IC, which is the current into this junction over here, is 50 times the current going into the base. So IC is going to be approximately equal to IE. IE will be slightly higher if you start considering the base current as well. But we can ignore that because it's going to be significantly less than IC anyway. So for this purpose, I'm ignoring IB. So I am just assuming IC is equal to IE. So 5 milliamps through here, 5 milliamps through here. Now, if there's 5 milliamps flowing here, then that means that we need to have a certain amount of current going into the base in order to meet our 5 milliamp output requirement. Now, if the beta is 50, then basically we need to divide 5 milliamps by 50, which is the beta. And then that gives us our IB current of 100 microamps. So the current flowing into this node 
needs to be at least 100 microamps. Now, if that's the case, then the current flowing down this path over here should be at least 10 times more than the current flowing into here so that the current flowing into the base is not loading these two resistors that much and affecting the bias voltage that we're setting you could go for higher if you want to so you could go times 100 but i think 10 10 is quite reasonable so what we are going to do is set the current through this path equal to 1 milliamp which is basically 10 times 100 microamps so we know that the voltage across the two resistors is going to be 15 volts because this is obviously connected to ground and this is connected to 15 volts we want 1 milliamp to flow through this so that means that the maximum resistance so the total combined resistance of R1 and R2 can be 15 kilo ohms. So I'm going to set that to 15 kilo ohms. Now we need to basically set this point by changing the ratio of these two resistors. Now the voltage that we want on over here is basically 0 0.6. Now if we do 0 0.6 divide by 15 volts, we get 0 0.04 and we can use that number to calculate R2 and R1 by looking at the maximum resistor that's 15k. So we have 15k times 0 0.04. So ignore the decimal point over here here and that gives us an R2 value of 600 ohms. R1 is basically 15k times 1 minus 0.04 so that's basically a remainder of the proportion so 1 being full and 0.04 is what's being taken over here. So that gives us an R1 value of 14k 4 ohms. So basically what we have done so far is set the value of RE to 3000 ohms, set the value of R2 to 600 ohms and set the value of R1 to 14k 4 ohms. We have made some assumptions based basically 0.6 volts drop from the base to emitter and that of a transistor has a gain of 50. That gain is basically the minimum gain so if we have anything above that our circuit should work fine. For step four we need to choose the value of C1 and basically this is a RC filter or a high pass RC filter. The load for the RC filter is basically R1, R2 and a function of RE in parallel. So for the RC filter we need to set the minus 3 dB B point to 20 hertz if you calculate the resistance looking into this node over here with r1 r2 and a function of re in parallel where the equivalent resistance for re is re times beta gives us a resistance value or the load on the rc filter of 574 ohms now if you plug those numbers into a rc filter calculator basically something like this so this is digi key so i put 574 ohms got a high pass filter i'm using an rc filter i have also set the cutoff frequency as 20 hertz and that is telling me that i need a capacitance of 13 microfarads now, obviously 13 microfarads might not be available so you might go for 22 microfarads or some other value closest value that is available let's say we go for 10 microfarads then this can also help you calculate the cutoff frequency that you should expect from this filter so if, if we were to use a 10 microfarad capacitor then the cutoff frequency will be 27 hertz rather than 20 hertz so this is the equation to calculate c1 so that's 1 over 2 pi RFC and obviously we've been through this many times on the channel before so if you want to learn more about RC filters you can check out one of my earlier videos but we get a capacitance value of 13.9 microfarads for this component over here. Now that means that we have calculated everything that we need to for this circuit we have re r1 r2 and c1 so on the screen now you have the final circuit that we have designed for this question using a plus and minus 15 volt power supply you can see i've got 600 ohms here 14k 4 ohms here 3k ohms on re and a capacitance value of 13.9 microfarad. Now what happens in this circuit basically is that you have a high pass RC filter on this side so any frequencies below 20 hertz will get attenuated and removed so they won't be seen on the output. Obviously they won't be completely removed so you might still see some of it. R1 and R2 basically form a potential divider and set the bias point for the base on the transistor. So we wanted to set this point to 0.6 volts so that's what we've done using these two components over here. And finally, what RE does is set the quiescent current for this circuit. Now, the question wanted us to set it as 5 milliamps. So we've basically selected 3 kilo ohms as we have 0 volts here and minus 15 volts over here. So let's quickly go through a simulation of this circuit. So basically, I've got all the components that we described in the presentation. And what I've done is basically put a AC sine wave into the input. And we're looking at the input and the output 
input signals. Now I'm going to change the input signal to one kilohertz. So that's basically just right clicking this voltage source over here and changing the frequency to one kilohertz. And I want to change the amplitude for now to 10 volts. Now zooming into over here, you can see our input voltage, which is the blue line is basically plus and minus 10 volts. So it goes from there down to 10 volts and you can see our output signal basically follows the input signal almost perfectly but there is a little bit of an offset which you can see over here and we can have a little bit further look on this by reducing our input voltage to see what the offset actually is so again the blue line is our input and the green line is the output and you can see there is about 250 millivolts of offset from what we are expecting and that's most likely due to the vbe voltage on this junction over here so we assumed 0.6 but let's look at what it actually is. So you can see on simulation, the VBE voltage is actually closer to 800 millivolts, not 600 millivolts. The next thing we did was to set the quiescent current to five milliamps. Now, if you wanted to analyze that, basically what we want to do is reduce the frequency of our signal to something very low so that it's not changing as much. So you can see that the input signal is only changing by 1.3 microvolts over the simulation period. And that will help us look at the quiescent current in the circuit. We can also see the offset basically we wanted to set this point to zero volts however it's been set at minus 240 millivolts if you wanted to fine tune the offset basically we've got minus 240 millivolts instead of zero millivolts you can add a potential meter with r2 and basically if you increase the potential meter you can basically reduce this point over here we can see we've got minus 250 millivolts over here and we have a current of 4.919 milliamps instead of 5 milliamps but that's because of the vbe voltage now if i increase this let's say we go for 660 or something like that we should basically get closer to what we need you can see our offset is disappearing as we are increasing r2 so i'm going to try 900 ohms as the final thing and see if we can get it close to zero volts obviously we've got 24 millivolts which is close enough and if you look at the quiescent current now it's basically very close to five milliamps only just eight microamps above what we wanted so basically you would want a potential meter here if you wanted to fine tune the offset and the quiescent current going through re but as you can see on the simulation the circuit is working as expected obviously there are some assumptions that we made like vbe that didn't quite hold up in simulation but those are kind of expected things now, if you also look at the beta for this transistor, it's going to be most likely higher than higher than 50. And we can basically select new transistors if you want to as well. So if you wanted to go for some other transistor, we're going to get slightly different um, output as well. So you can see the beta on this transistor simulation is 700 millivolts rather than the 860 that we saw previously. Now, all of that is just fine tuning and does vary from transistor to transistor as well. So that's all I have to share with you today for this question. Hopefully you found that you useful and if you have any suggestions for me or any feedback on this questions please let me know in the comment section below so thank you for watching today if you enjoyed the content don't forget to like comment and subscribe you can also share this video if you want to support this channel further thank you for watching bye for now